my friends, Lindsay with LaTori Studio, and welcome to the watercolor tutorial where we are going to paint a Nautilus shell. So the paper I have here is Arches Cold Press. It has a deckled edge. I'm also using a very short pencil, as you can see, that is the 2B. And make sure to check out the blog post for a list of materials that I use. I'll link them all there. But go ahead and start drawing the Nautilus shell. Now it has a really big sweeping motion, kind of like a heart, half of a heart that's turned on its side. And go ahead and use a light touch because as you can see here, I'm going over and kind of correcting the lines until I get it exactly how I want to do it. If you use too heavy of a touch, it will be rather difficult to erase and you'll see your pencil lines through the watercolor paint. Now using the General's Tri-Tip Eraser, I'm actually going to lightly erase all the lines. The reason I do this is because I don't want to really see a whole bunch of pencil marks under the finished Nautilus shell. Now go ahead and grab your watercolor paints. Watercolor is always at the base for me because gouache is very opaque, meaning you cannot see through it. So you want to start off with your most translucent layers, building up to the heaviest layers. So here I have my big watercolor brush. I have some watercolor paints, which I will link in the blog. So let's get to painting. The first thing you're gonna do is a wet on wet technique by doing a water wash over the entire base of the shell, making sure you do not go outside of that outer pencil line of the Nautilus shell. And next you're gonna bring in the color. So I'm not gonna share here what pigments I use to create this color for a couple of reasons. One, I've had my palette for about 20 years and I don't actually know the names of the colors. And two, um, I just kind of mix it by sight and by feeling. Um, so I don't have those specific details for you. But the technique I'm doing is once you do get a color that you like, I am painting the outside edge and leaving that innermost part of the Nautilus shell just that clear wash. And the reason is it creates an illusion that the shell is popping off the paper by creating a shadow along the outside edge. Now the technique I'm using here is after you do your wash and your pigment along the outside of the shell, take a dry brush, a dry clean brush, and start blending out that color, the pigment that's on the outer edge with the lack of color or just the water that's found within the inner edge. And what this does is soften up the shell, kind of removes those harsh watery layers that you had, and it's almost like using a beauty blender when you're putting on your makeup. It just really softens everything. So here I'm going back over that wet shell, that wet pigments on water with a more purpley pink hue to bring in some further shadows as if the shell is resting on top of a table. So fun fact about the Nautilus while we're painting, they've actually remained relatively unchanged evolutionarily wise over the past 500 million years, that's million with an M, and are often considered to be living fossils, which is pretty darn cool. Another fun fact is that they have also been found at depths reaching more than 2,000 feet, which is just crazy. So here you're just going to keep blending away, just adding pigment and blending. I added more purples, added more shadows to the top of the shell there. So where watercolors tend to get tricky is you have to know how to move quickly and um, and with, with gusto when you're painting, you don't want your paints to dry um, before you're done, kind of creating that, that really nice blended shadow. But you also need to know when to stop and let the painting rest and completely dry before moving on to the next layer. And you'll see a big mistake, even for someone that's been painting for a while, that this is my professional job, mistakes still happen to us. So let's check out what happened here and how I recovered. So what I did was I went back and added another layer trying to create more of a shadowed effect on paint that wasn't quite still wet and movable, wasn't quite fully dry, which ended up removing um, the bottommost layer of the paint, which created that streak there. And you can see my hand pausing as I went, uh, uh-oh. <laughs> and after this point, I actually started over another Nautilus shell, wasn't as happy as that first one, and then just came back and just said, no, let's do this as a learning opportunity for me, if it works out. So how I recovered is I let my shell fully dry. I practiced a little bit of patience, um, worked on some other commission work, and then came back to it. And once the shell was dry, I was able to come back through with a deep layer. I added more pigment, and then I went back through with some washes and just with just plain water, just blended it out through the shell so that it masked the layer of paint that was removed underneath. And at the end of it, you couldn't probably really tell that there was this mistake to begin with. So 
I'm glad I did not give up on the shell. I came back to it and now I'm happy. Which in here, there's probably a good life lesson when you feel like you've made a mistake and that you can't come back to it and return. Just take a step back, pause, go to something else and then come back to it with a clear head and the answers normally do present themselves. So another blending technique that I use here is outside of that dry brush, which is really used for when both the base layer and the layer on top, when they're both wet. Um, when the bottom layer is dry, you'll want to use just plain water along the edge of that pigment to create that gradient effect. Okay, now that you have been a patient painter and you've let all your watercolor layers dry, now we're going to have fun going over the top with gouache. So I created a color that's kind of a, um, a sunny marigold color for those stripes that are seen along the outside of the nautilus shell. And here, just don't overthink it. Just, just go in with that gouache, um, have it be a consistency that's not super thick so it is chunky on the paper but it moves somewhat like a watercolor, maybe moves like an acrylic paint if you're familiar with that. Um, so just moves fluidly across the paper and you can do a little few test strips on that test paper over there. But just create kind of tiger stripes in a way. Um, connect them. I'm not trying to copy precisely any image that I see. I, at this point I'm just going at it and just having fun. So once you have all those nautilus stripes around the outside edge, they're kind of moving in towards that center part, I'm adding some more shadows to the inner part. So I take that same kind of marigold color and I'm creating stripes, um, just radiating off of that center most part of the shell. Um, and here I'm actually watering down my gouache a lot so it has the consistency more of watercolor to create a softer gradient shadowed effect that has that marigold orangey color in the middle. So I'll show you my palette here. This is a cool flower palette. So that's that marigold I created and now I'm moving to the darkest color, black. I normally save my uh, darkest blacks or dark grays and whites to the very, very end to add those final um, minute little details. So here I'm adding some of the deepest color just there at the top um, of that innermost circle on the Nautilus shell. Kind of feels like I'm adding eyeliner and then I'm actually going to use a smudging technique that um, really made me feel like I was putting on eyeliner on the shell, which kind of was making me laugh while I was doing this. So just smudge it out so you're just removing a lot of those harsh lines. It looks like more of a natural shell that's found in the wild. So just keep blending that black out and then we're going to move to adding a really deeper marigold color, kind of add more browns to it. Um, just on that top edge is what I did. You can add it all the way around. I just added it to the top just to create a little more shadow and dimension and depth to the shell. So it again appears that the shell is just popping off of the paper. So the final step I'm going to do is add my white gouache. You can see this is one of my most used uh, paint tubes. I just use so much white. Um, so I'm adding white at the very, very end to create that glistening effect that the Nautilus shell has. So again, I'm making the consistency um, not super thick so that it moves easily across the paper, but um, thick enough so that it doesn't go completely translucent like watercolor, which is one of the benefits I feel of using watercolor and gouache, because you could add the gouache right on top. Those whites just make the painting pop um, and adds that glistening effect. So now you have your Nautilus shell. Thank you so much for following along and painting. I would love to see what you have created, so please share and tag me on social media. And if you have any comments or anything that you would like to see different in these tutorials, let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for joining.